Okay. Hello, welcome, bonjour, hola, como estas? Today I'm going to share with you guys my 21 days geopolymer experimentation that I've done when I was living in Cusco. This experimentation was aimed to reproduce or try to replicate the ancient masonry of the ancient temples. Here's the preparation, how I got there. I flew from Mexico to Bolivia April 1st for a new adventure. I went and visited Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, and I went to collect some weathered sandstone at a little town called Cayamarca. The reason why I went at that, at that site was because of Joseph Davidovitz. Stick, stick with me. I will explain who is this guy and more information on why I went and collect material at this site. So I got weathered sandstone at Cayamarca, the picture here on the left. Then I took a bus from La Paz, Bolivia to Yunguyu, Peru. I stopped at Cerro Capia. This is the picture of me here on the right to collect some andesite sand. So my whole journey before uh, stopping and settling in Cusco was to collect materials to be able to do my experimentation. Then I continued my way up to Puno where I bought some guano that came from Ilo. Guano, it's actually the shit, yeah, the shit of birds, seabirds. Took a bus from Puno to Cusco, and I, I had a little uh, adventure because the roads were blocked. So I walked uh, over seven hours and a half, I would say closer to nine hours. And then I arrived in my Airbnb, where I also bought some lime powder, and I bought some baking soda and table salt in order to make my own natron salt. This preparation is just to tell you all the materials that I have on hand to do this experimentation and where I source the material. So I have weathered sandstone, andesite sand, guano, lime powder, and I've made my own natron. For the molding technique, I will use metal and wood. I won't use clay and latex. So here's the explanation of the preparation. I went to this side because of Joseph Davidovitz. Joseph Davidovitz is a French scientist, very, very knowledgeable guy, specialized in geopolymer. He went in Bolivia a couple of years ago, and he went and studied the site of Tiwanaku and Pumapunku and came up with the theory that the materials for the geopolymer come, came from the site uh, the village of Cayamarca, like in this video. Hello everyone, uh, today I'm here with Cesar, who helped me to come here in Cayamarca. Here in Cayamarca we can find some sandstones, but the sandstones is very different. We have some sandstones right here that's been affected by the elements. This one is very easy, as you can see. becomes like powder, polvo. And then we have the same stone right here, but this one is not affected by the element. So the, the previous one, this we called weathered sandstone, and this one is the original. As you can see, it won't break. It's too hard. But to do a geopolymer composition for a sandstone, you need that type of sandstone, that is a weathered sandstone. This, you see, it becomes like powder. And with this, this will be the filler in the geopolymer sandstone to build the temples, para construir los templos. Gracias. So this video was me in the up the mountain in the village of Cayamarca. And this video on the left is me collecting andesite sand. So 
So that video was me at Cerro Capia. Now, a little bit more information on why I went and collect the materials over there and a little bit of the research of Joseph Davidovitz. This is him comparing some samples from uh, Cayamarca compared to the samples that he took at the site of Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. And he saw that they were very similar. This is the analysis that he, he did with an um, electron microscope. So you can tell that the composition of this, the whether it's sandstone coming from Cayamarca is very similar to the one of Pumapunku. And those other two sites are what the other geologists, uh, not the geologists, archaeologists are proposing. But his theory, I think, makes a lot more sense if you look at the composition. Now, uh, this is an um, analysis a little bit more in depth of the samples that he took compared to the site of Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. And he explained here that the kaolinite clay is a major mineral commonly found in geopolymer synthesis and the manufacture of geopolymer concrete. This kaolinite um, clay, the quantities of it, detected by the XRD analysis for MAR are high enough to start geopolymerization. <laughs> so that's how he, he came up with his theory. So before starting the uh, explanation of my experimentation, I just want to say a big thank you to the Geopolymer Institute. And also a disclaimer, I'm not a geologist or a chemist. I do not work for the Geopolymer Institute. I am a human being, <laughs> a free spirit named Wallace very passionate by all knowledge of ancient civilization. I did my studies in architecture. Own, I owned a construction company and landscaping company back when I was in Canada and many other companies. I made my money in those sector, invested all my money, and now I'm just focused on knowledge. I have worked with concrete uh, many times, built houses with my father, so I have a little bit of hands-on experience with concrete. Now, let's start this experimentation. The question to start this experimentation. What were the molds made out of? What is the purpose of the knobs? What was the construction technique used? Artificial stone or natural stones? Where did they source the materials? If artificial stones, what was their recipe? Meaning geopolymer recipe. Nobody has the answer, so let's start experimenting. That's the best way to learn is to experiment because we don't know what's in front of us. Tons of mistakes are in front of us, that's for sure, and this is how we will learn. So let's do this experiment. Now, before we start the experiment, let's resume what we know or what we can observe. There's different types of masonry in the ancient worlds of Peru or close to Peru. You can tell here the small, this is just some names that I invented pretty much, but small polygonal masonry. It's not that small, but for the purpose of it, Sm small bubble rectangle, megalithic. So this is small polygonal compared to those megalithic. And then we have small and large straight rectangle, meaning the lines are perfectly straight. The knobs are always present at the bottom of a stone. Why? Bottom, 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 bottom. Always at the bottom. Here you can see some concave knobs. And here we have some convex knobs. So what was the purpose of those knobs? We will talk about this later. Some are andesite, some are sandstone, limestone, diorite, gran granite base, but always with no gap in between the stones, meaning the joints are perfect. How do you achieve this? How do you achieve this? We will see with this experimentation. So the goal of the experimentation was to be able to create huge stones. In my case, 
the same shape of those huge stones because my scale of experimentation is quite small. I was doing this experimentation in the kitchen. So eventually I will do a large scale experimentation to replicate this masonry. Then to have no gap in between the joints. So how do we achieve this? And also finding the molding technique. So how did they make the molds? Those are the two geopolymer recipe that I will be working with. Andesite and acidic medium. So it's the andesite sand that I collected at Cerro Capia. Guano from Ilo. And then a source of oxalic acid. Then we have sandstone and alkaline medium. This is the weathered sandstone that I've collected in Cayamarca. Natron salt that I've made in the kitchen and lime powder that I've bought in Cusco. Now look at the knobs. This was a theory that I that was sent to me when I was starting this experimentation because many people were following my work and they saw that I was doing something like hands-on. So someone sent this to me. He was He's working in the field of metallurgy. So he's working with this type of setup on a daily basis and he explained to me that those are injection gates and his theory was that the knobs that we see on each stone are actually the remains of <laughs> injection gates so here on the picture on the left on the image on the left you can see the mold with the dot line and then you see the two injection gates and then it was very similar at the beginning, I thought it was a very, very, very good theory. But uh, the more I went forward with this experimentation, the less I thought this to be the good explanation. Especially just, just right now, anyone who look at this picture on the right will say, if this was the case, why some stones don't have those knobs? Why? Because probably that wasn't the case, that wasn't the function. Now, um, again, about the knobs, what was the function of the knobs? You see, they are always at the bottom of the stones, but then we get to Sacsayhuaman and we have concave knobs, meaning they go inside the rock. How did they did, uh, did the mold? So, in this experimentation, I will use wood and I will also use number four, flexible uh, flexible metal sheets that we can bend in different shape. And this is very interesting because it's exactly like all the snakes that we see on the walls. So maybe there is a correlation. I won't be using latex or clay um, just because it, it didn't resonate with me and uh, it didn't make tons of sense plus I didn't have any access to latex and then doing some research on the the geography of Peru the latex was only found in the Amazonian jungle here is the snakes that I'm talking about this is one of the wall in Cusco tons of snake on them on it why why we find so many snakes on ancient masonry So let's start this experimentation. First, I had to make my own natron because you cannot buy natron salt. The natron for the ancient civilization of Peru, or Peru is a country, so it's not even true. It's just uh, in our mind that it exists. But the, the ancient civilization in this region, the source was Laguna Cachi in Bolivia, in modern day Bolivia. But I didn't went there, so I had no natron, I had to make my own. I had a comment um, from Joseph Davidovitz because we were in, in touch during this whole experimentation. And he's telling me that I made a mistake and it's true. He says that I, I didn't made some proper natron because uh, I didn't use the the right materials to start with. I use baking soda instead of uh, sodium carbonate. 
I use sodium bicarbonate. Don't, so I made a little mistake here, but still you will see how I made this happen. So now, after a while, this is the consistency. There's still some water inside. We'll transfer this over here and let it dry for a few days. Here it is. You can see 500 milliliters. Yes, that's normal. So let's Here it continue. Is. So those are the recipes that I would be starting with, but I'm telling you right now, I've switched recipes many, 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 many times because I had no knowledge of geopolymer before doing this experimentation and nobody was helping me. Even Joseph wasn't helping me much. Uh, so what I had to do was to watch all the videos of Joseph Davidovitz on YouTube and there's especially one video where he's doing the Egypt Egyptian blocks. And I watched the video maybe 10 times. And I've come up with this estimate that this those were the quantities that he was using. So I based my first recipes on those quantities. Now, this is the end of part one for this presentation of my 21 days experimentation come back for part two and i will show you some recipes as you can see right now the process and a lot more details so i'll see you in part two thank you for listening thank you for watching if you have any questions if you have any theories just leave them in the comment section below if you haven't subscribed to the channel i would highly recommend because there is tons of knowledge coming your way I do this by passion. I do this for knowledge. I do this for you guys, my family, humanity. So I'll see you in the next video, part two.